Hi, I'm Akbar. I'm a developer advocate at Figma, and this is Bridging the Gap, where we talk about developer and designer collaboration and understanding more about the process. I'm here with Lauren. Hey, I am Lauren. I'm a designer advocate here at Figma. Before I came to Figma, I was a product designer for about five years. Now, one of the things that we talk about a lot doesn't necessarily have to do with the process of working together with design, but understanding where each other, where it would be each of us are coming from. So as a developer, some of the things that I'm concerned about are making sure that our the well, the product that we're building is performant, making sure that it's scalable, it's consistent, and these things don't always mesh well with design. What what's that look like for you? Like what are the things that you need to be caring about? Yeah, I think as a designer, I'm obviously super concerned that it looks good. I want it to have a really great user experience, um, and I want it to look really nice. And I think one of the tricky parts is that we are literally speaking different languages. I don't know how to code, <laughs> I and that's okay, but we have our own things that we're focused on. And one of the things that I find is that as you kind of grow in your career, and I think as you grow in maturity as a designer, as a developer, you start to switch your mindset to what is, how can I get what I want out of this? How can I make this work for me? How can I make sure that this is the best possible design? And you switch that to be, okay, how do we, how can we work together? It's no longer like, how, how can you make this the best coded thing possible? This is me, I obviously, <laughs> can, is it clear that I'm not a developer? <laughs> but how do you make this work? How can I make it pretty? How can we combine our interests here? One of the things that nobody really likes to talk about is that we do have our own perspectives that we're coming to here with, and we have our own goals. We have our own individual goals. As a designer, I want this to look really good because if it doesn't look good, other people might see it and think I'm not a good designer. Or if I'm trying to get a job or trying to build out my portfolio, I wanna put the best looking stuff in here. And I need to be able to move past that and say, okay, I want this to look great and I want this to work well. And I wanna make sure that my developer can build this out without having it to take 85,000 days. Like I need to find where I can get those compromises to make sure if I do have to make those compromises, where is it gonna work, that it's still gonna be a great piece um, and just start to think of it as a whole together and not just my individual part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and on that front, like as a developer, something that's really important is like how quickly we can ship. And that comes into that comes into focus with like whether or not we're doing things in a scalable way, if we're doing things consistently. And you know, we wanna be able to show off our code and be like, hey, this isn't some like crazy spaghetti code. This is something that's been really well considered. It's really thoughtfully uh, designed. Um, and I, I don't think our goals are necessarily at odds with each other, but sometimes it feels like we're focused on one thing instead of trying to work together. And we're talking at each other instead of talking with each other. 100%. And I think too, one thing that's really key to start talking with each other is to make sure that we're understanding each other. Because like I said, I'm if you're telling me I can't do this, I need to know why. And you don't need to you don't need to go fully into like all the details, but giving me an understanding of hey, we can't do this because it's going to take an extra 20 weeks. Immediately in my head is like, oh, well, why would we do that? Like we can easily, I can easily figure out a different design. I don't want to put more on you when I could easily change this. So I think the big thing to me is telling me why we can't do this. And same thing on me. It should be for me to tell you, why do I need this so badly? Why is this design so important to me to make sure that you're understanding? Okay, this is, no, this is worth the yeah. time and effort. Um, and that's something that we can come together and figure out, is it worth it? Yeah, and I think that that's a really important point. Like one of the challenges that we talk about a lot is making sure that things are kind of compliant with how you're thinking about code, that the patterns make sense, or that you're trying to work within the system. But you're right, sometimes it does make sense to break that mold. And so it's really important to be able to have that conversation and understand which things are like really easy and how much time they're gonna they're gonna cost and which things like are worth the extra amount of time and effort because at the end of the day we both have to be able to flag this to our our PM um, just our managers in general like mm -hmm. hey this thing's gonna take a little bit of extra time and we need to be able to say why right and we need to be able to like stand with like the justification that this is gonna make for a better product and I think at the end of the day both designers and developers. That's what we care about, right? Making a great product right. that everyone wants to use and that does its job well. Absolutely. So one of the things that we talk about is as part of understanding where each of us are coming from, there's a little bit of knowledge sharing that has to happen, right? You, Like you said, you're not an engineer, so you might not know some of the things that I'm concerned about as a developer. 
And likewise, I might not know too much about design. And so it's always helpful when we're able to kind of share that knowledge. Um, do you have any stories about when that was really helpful for you? Yeah, when um, in my job before Figma, I worked super closely with a lot of really, really great developers. Um, and I found that their communication style was just really great because they found ways to break things down for me that I could understand. Um, there was one developer that I worked with who we were working um, off of a, a SDK, a kit that was already built out. Um, and I wanted to move some things around and he gave me a house analogy. He was like, if you can, you can move the windows on the same floor, like that's pretty easy to do. But once you start moving the windows to the second floor, that gets really confusing. And when you start moving the doors to the second floor, like that's when things start to get a little bit funky. And it made it a lot more clear in my head of like, okay, doing this simple change, that's gonna be a lot easier for him versus once I try and go big and start rearranging the entire the entire design, um, that's when it gets to be a lot more complicated. Um, so just sitting down and having those conversations, bringing in those analogies in a way that it was like, to me, it was like, oh, obviously that makes so much sense. Why would I not do that? Um, is super, super helpful. And just kind of really just spending the time to have those conversations is key. Getting to know how each other works, how your developers work. Um, I feel like that's why I've had such really good working relationships with my developers is because I got to know how they work. Do they like to like communicate via messaging or do they like to meet in person? Like how do they do this? Are they really detailed on certain things? What do they super care about? And then them learning the same things about me, like how do I like to work? What are the things that are super important to me? Just helps build that relationship. And as you build that relationship, you naturally start to just work so much better together. Yeah. And I know that we're talking specifically about designers and developers, but like this just feels like good life advice. We're just trying to, we're trying to get things done and we need to be able to trust each other. Yeah. And I think too, that's like so, so like you said, good life advice. It's so important to remember developers, designers, your coworkers, they're people too. Like the easiest thing I always, I, I think it's because I've had such really good relationships with my developers that I always say like, it's, it's actually not as hard as like, there's no secret to how do you make these relationships work? It's just be a good person, like yeah. get, get to understand them, talk to them like a person. Um, like don't just like spew facts at them, yeah. like uh, get to understand each other. Um, a hundred percent. It's just talk to them like a person. I think a big part of that, about that is just kind of like, there's a level of like not taking things so personally, mm -hmm. um, and trusting that the other person on the other side has the best intent 100 percent, and that helps a lot even when even necessary not necessarily if they if they do like it helps a lot in terms of just navigating that relationship and so like if i don't agree with something it doesn't feel like oh this person is just like trying to pick a fight with me mm -hmm. but it's more like hey i don't agree with this and this is why like is there an alternative is there a compromise that we can come to and ultimately, I think it also leads to better solutions, right? Yeah. Like when I'm able to kind of provide my input as to like, oh, I think this would be a better design solution mm -hmm. or I think this might work a lot better for our users and being able to like get those ideas from both ends. Whereas if you don't have that trust, like I wouldn't even want to speak up. Like if, right. if we're always fighting, like I don't even want to bring up anything that's going to invite more conflict. Yeah, the trust is huge. And I think too, like you said, trusting each other is huge because there's a reason why you are the developer and I am the designer. We each have our own expertise. And I 100% think there should be collaboration um, among like some of the best designs that I've had. We've brought our developers in and we think about these designs together. Like we have these fun sessions where just because I'm the designer doesn't mean I'm the only one who gets to design. Like bring me your ideas. These are gonna be great ideas. They're gonna help me. You know, you know the ins and outs of like the inside of the product better than I do. I know the outside of the product. I know how it should look, but when we bring those together, it's gonna make a really great design. And then at a certain point, once we like you've kind of shared your thoughts and we've put those together and we've compromised on things, then at a certain point comes the trust. Then yeah. you have to trust me that this is the best design and I have to trust you that this is the best way to build this. Um, but I think having that, having those conversations first and like collabing together in the beginning and then trusting is huge. Speaking of that trust, um, can you tell me about a time that 
it might have been challenging for you to establish that and how you might have navigated that? It's always hard at the very beginning, just working with a new person. Um, just again, trying to understand how they work. Um, I think too, when you're working with contractors who you might not have as much access to, um, I, that's something that's super important for us to remember. Like when we talk about these designer developer relationships, as much as everybody may want to have those, sometimes there are just limits that are put in place of like, we don't have access to the developers. Um, we the, and they don't have access to us. They're like, somebody is a contractor and things are just shipped off. Um, but I think trying to get in as much information as you can to those folks that like you don't have as direct contact with, whether it's through like annotations or something like that. So you can kind of get as much information to them as possible, I think is going to be huge. Um, but yeah, I think always at the beginning of a relationship, it's trying to figure out just like any other relationship. How do you work? How How is this going to work? Um, and it's just about talking it out and figuring out what's the best way, whether that is actually getting together and talking it out, or if you're not able to, like writing it up somewhere, even in a message when you send off your designs, just kind of like, hey, thanks for doing this. Really excited to work with you. Here are some here are some key points that I want to call out yeah. in these designs. Um, is there anything that you would recommend in terms of kind of learning a little bit more about that process when you're working with an engineer? Like, how would you how would you approach that conversation? I think being bringing it out um, up front is super, super great. Um, I actually worked with a developer once who I thought had this amazing idea. Anytime he started working with someone new, yeah. he would send them a slide deck of about him. It was just kind of ways he likes to work, um, fun things that are just like about him, like yeah. activities he likes to do and stuff like that. Um, and it's kind of, it might seem like a, oh wow, this is a lot to, I, I just met you. But it was actually really, really outstanding because it's like, oh, this is how he loves to work. Like yeah. this is how, what's gonna make us work best together. And actually encouraged our team to start doing it ourselves of like, hey, anytime we start with a new person, let's just start it off on the right foot. Like, let's let them know how we like to work. Let them know a little bit about ourselves to get start that relationship. Um, and I think that was a, a really fun way of, of getting to know them right off the bat. Yeah, and I think it also speaks to something you were talking about earlier about humanizing them, right? Where like, you you stop seeing them just as a resource, hundred percent, and start seeing them as like a partner and a collaborator in your team. So you're naturally going to start building more of that trust and asking those questions, and inviting those conversations. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is there anything that you absolutely want to share to our audience about a, a common tip that like maybe developers aren't as uh, in tune to? Oh, okay. So number one, be kind. That's the common tip that everybody needs to know, not just developers, designers, everybody. But the tip in Figma that I do want, there's a random that I want everybody to know, especially developers um, or even PMs that you work with, you can star your files. This was uh, just so random, but um, I always uh, was having folks say to me like, oh, can you give me that file? Can you link me that file? Can you link me that file? And I was like, did you know you could star it? And it was blew their mind when they found out that they could always have an easy access. So you can star your files. That's a big I, I think I'm going to have to agree on that, especially because early on in Figma, like finding a file was such a pain. And when I learned that I could star things, that just became the instant way. Like, especially if we're in a file multiple times a week, every week, like it saves me so much time. 100%. And I think we talk about flow state a lot and especially just like staying in the flow and like trying to prevent as many distractions as possible. Mm -hmm. And that's a big one. Yep, 100%. Speaking of distractions, you can use the desktop app. I know I feel like uh, a lot of times um, I find developers in on the browser just because it's easy so that they can yeah. easily switch back and forth. But if you want to eliminate distractions, I like the desktop app because it's only Figma in there. So it's a fun. I think that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Lauren. You bet. This was Bridging the Gap, and we're looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye.